Let's take a moment to go back in time to the year 2007. In 2007, I was in seventh grade, and during that time, two things happened that really impacted my life. The first was Nicole Richie's Trend of Side Things, which, for the record, looked horrible on me. And the second was the release of Apple's first iPhone. Apple's slogan, this is only the beginning, and headlines reading, Apple reinvents the phone seemed super presumptuous and incredibly dramatic to my 13-year-old self. I mean, this was a time when portable DVD players were still cool, so the invention of a new phone didn't register to me as the future of our society. But in 2008, I joined the Apple epidemic and graduated from my beloved Razer cell phone to an iPhone 3G. I didn't know this at the time, but my decision to switch to a smartphone, this new adoption of technology, has ultimately led to change the way I live, how I receive information, and how I perceive the rest of the world. Now back to the present in 2018. I am a full-time artist, categorized millennial, and quite literally a person who functions with the world at their fingertips. And when I say that, I mean I actually do everything on my phone, including running my art business. How millennial is that? Running an art business on a five and a half by two and a half inch screen that fits in your pocket. I'm often asked the questions, how did this happen? How did you become an artist? The non-idealized truth is, when I grew an Instagram following and started getting paid for my passion and craft, I went from being a possible artist or lover of the arts to a professional artist. It was my inner entrepreneur that saw an opportunity for me to create a career out of something I loved. Now, most people are disappointed when they hear that. They want a more passionate, eloquent answer filled with the essence of transcendence that is so often strung over the realm of art. But the truth is, how I became an artist is more similar to how someone becomes a professional athlete or a well-known model than some moment of divine intervention. The advancements made in technology over the past 10 years have completely restructured our society, specifically catering to the entrepreneurial self. The concept of everything functioning faster, better, and stronger has led us to believe that we, as individuals, have the ability to succeed sooner. While these structural changes in the realm of technology have, of course, impacted every field, we're seeing a really unique correlation between innovation and creativity. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. Through social media, artists are redefining how the art world does business. In 2016, I graduated from the College of Fine Arts at the University of Texas here in Austin. Welcome. I, as many college-age artists will soon experience, lost my studio space, free exhibition space, group critiques, and the opportunity of exposing my work to even a fraction of the 54,000 people I was on campus with. As desolate and isolating as the scenario sounds, I walked away with three things that weren't gonna disappear on me like everything else. My education, my iPhone, and Instagram. Described as a simple way to capture and share the world's moments, Instagram is a democratizing tool that has essentially become the perfect incubator for artists to grow and thrive. Just like any other job or business, people in the art world want and need to make money. But somehow artists have gotten the short end of the stick. We all know the joke about artists in the class system. There's the upper class, the middle class, the lower class, the poorest of the poor, and then artists. So who's to blame in this situation? 
Why is it that artists are always categorized as starving and poor when the gallerist is the one pulling up to a meeting in a 2018 Range Rover? Most people are shocked to hear that on average, galleries take a 50% commission for each piece of art you sell, 50%. I'll be the first to admit that when I heard this, I was shocked, annoyed, and asked myself the most generic question of them all, why? I mean, I couldn't understand what the galleries were doing or what they could offer me that allowed them to take such a high percent of the sale. I mean, 50% is a lot when this is your livelihood we're talking about. But I hate not knowing the answer to things, so I broke it down. Simply put, there's a two-part factor in art sales. One is the creation of the work by the artist, and two is the sale of the actual work. So if you create something that you expect somebody else to market, sell, and deal with all of the customer service associated with the sale of your work, then they are entitled to a 50% commission because they're doing half the work. But Instagram is redefining how the art world does business by creating a new way for artists to sell their work and keep 100% of the profits. In 2018, your followers are your client list and social media is allowing artists to take on the traditional roles of marketing, branding, sharing, selling, and customer service that used to only be intertwined with the gallery business. Artists are reclaiming the power of exposure and strategically curating their platforms in a more business-oriented way. Take Ashley Longshore, for example. She is a self-made Instagram artist who has completely bypassed the need of gallery representation. In fact, she's been so successful that Bergdorf Goodman chose her to be their first ever female artist to display her work in their iconic Fifth Avenue windows. Success stories like this make us wonder where can we go from here and exemplify a changing market. Being an artist today means so much more than honing your craft and creating a brand for you and your work has become a really big part of that. But since the beginning of time, art has been conflated with branding. You see a cave painting and you think cavemen. You see water lilies and you think Monet. You see a cubist, Picasso-style painting, and you know it's Picasso. <laughs> the same goes for Frida Kahlo, Basquiat, Pollock, Da Vinci, De Kooning, Warhol, Kelly, Klimt, Rothko, etc., etc. But instead of these brand associations resonating with viewers in a retrospective way, Instagram is allowing followers to make real-time associations between the artists they follow and the work they're producing. Instagram ingrained in Instagram's DNA is the urgency for all of us as users to supplement our posts with various hashtags and filters. But artists are the ones that have really been able to capitalize on this. It's your profile that categorizes your art as a brand and the username and hashtags you choose are what allow followers to distinguish your work from another's. It's what takes a post I do from being the ordinary art to making it my own and adding things like hashtag rag art, hashtag pop art, hashtag female art, really just pushing the notions and associations I want branded and conflated with my own work. And this is a new type of technology that artists haven't been able to do before now. As with most new technology, it's hard to remember what we did before blank. How did we instantly watch videos before YouTube? How did we remember everybody's birthday before Facebook? How did we discover a new music before iTunes and Spotify? How were artists successful and discovered before Instagram? I remember meeting with my first studio landlord right after graduation, and she asked me what my goals were as an artist. 
I was so excited. I quickly rattled off everything I wanted to achieve in the upcoming year. And as soon as I finished, she looked at me and just burst out laughing, like actually laughing in my face. She was quick to inform me that everything I wanted to achieve would take a quote, really, really long time to do because she herself had accomplished many of the goals I had just listed, but it had taken her 20 plus years to do so. After she said that, I just kind of stood there and let my millennial brain take over. I thought, mm, that's not gonna work for me. There has to be a more efficient way to go about achieving my goals as an artist. And there was, I was already doing it. Instagram is proving to be an alternative and efficient way for artists to get discovered and be successful without the 20 year waiting period. It's enabling artists to grow a following faster than ever, make direct sales, receive praises for their work in the forms of likes and comments, connect with followers and share their work with a large scale audience. A few months ago, an art class in Houston was given the assignment to create an homage of an artist they admired. After the class had completed the project, I was informed that one of the students had chosen me. Beyond being flattered, I was consumed by the profound impact something I had shared on Instagram had on a follower. It was crazy to think that a student had chosen an artist whose work they had only seen through the screen of an iPhone. This story is the perfect example as to how Instagram is changing the way artists are being discovered. How this girl discovered my work and did her project on me is the same way a fellow classmate discovered Andy Warhol and decided to do their project on him. It used to be that galleries were the ones responsible for discovering and sharing the names of new, hot, up-and-coming artists, but that's simply not the case anymore. Now, Instagram is functioning as an artist's own virtual gallery providing users a completely free way of sharing an unlimited number of photos and operating as the link between artists and their followers. Existing on a platform with 800 million active monthly users and growing is an incomparable form of exposure. There is no place or gallery in the world that can offer the day-to-day -day exposure and integration of your work into the lives of hundreds, thousands, or even millions of potential collectors. It's Instagram that allows you to create something on Tuesday and by Wednesday, you become an overnight art sensation. This growing market of virtual exposure is changing the way, uh, is changing the way artists function in the art world because we as artists have the ability to share our work when and how we choose to. In today's terms, taking on the title artist means going beyond the canvas. Utilizing social media and Instagram in particular takes you from being an artist to making you an advertiser, brand ambassador, curator, gallery, art broker, curator, CEO, and my personal favorite, creative genius. So where does this leave the relationship between artists and the galleries? Well, it's a return of power to the creator and has its effects on the artist and curator alike. The artist has effectively become independent and this sense of independence that has been brought about by Instagram is what's disrupting the art world. The artist now embodies all of these roles instead of relying on a gallery to do them, do those roles for them. Within this growth of expectations and operations, a new value system comes into play. Getting into a gallery doesn't mean you've made it in the art world, just that world. And Instagram as the app or interface is woven into all of our real world. 
is the method in which more and more people are turning to for visualizing, learning, sharing, experiencing. So now getting into a gallery is no longer the marker of real success, but more of an antiquated success. As a whole, Instagram has created an opportunity for artists to be successful outside the gallery setting. It's created a new market for art to exist by kicking out the middleman or the gallery and allowing artists to independently be successful. It's returned full autonomy to the artists. For once, we as artists have the upper hand and innovation has granted us the possibility to make the changes we want to see. How artists are redefining how the art world does business was truly validated to me a couple weeks ago when I was back at UT meeting with a former professor. Before we sat down, I ran to the bathroom and as I was washing my hands, I looked up and saw plastered across the art school bathroom mirror a flyer for a new workshop. A workshop titled Hashtag We Create, offering students a way to learn about running a creative business. In a way, this was a huge sigh of relief, assuring me that I wasn't crazy or insane and that the changes I so much believe in and implement into my everyday practices are taking place globally and being recognized universally. The information I've presented you with today is so much bigger than the 2007 trend of side bangs and more life-changing than getting my first iPhone. It's the recognition of a historical and social movement regarding the arts a change in art history that is destined for textbook greatness. A moment where thousands of dissertations will derive and the qualities associated with being an artist will be redefined. So just as Apple reinvented the phone, we too are reinventing what belongs in the art world, reinventing how the art world does business and surpassing the expectations set for us one click at a time. So in the words of Apple, this is only the beginning. Thank you.